We're here from the Eden Center with Rabbanit Nechama Goldman Barish, Yoatzin Alacha, a Kala teacher and Balanit for over 20 years. She's going to show us here through the Efrat Mikvah. Hi, Nechama. We're here during the day. Do women dip in the mikvah during the day? So women don't normally go during the day. Mikvahs are opened at night. There are some exceptions. The exceptions are brides on the day of their wedding or maybe the day before, and in extenuating circumstances, opening the mikvah for special cases. Okay, so this structure, where, where's the water of the mikvah? So the water from the mikvah is usually in collectors that collect rainwater when it rains and then gather the water into a pit that is usually stored under the floors of the mikvah. It connects to the pipes that, uh, that bring tap water into the mikvah, so women don't actually immerse in rainwater. So does that mean the water is cold if it's coming from the tap? When the water comes out of the tap, it in fact is cold. However, there are radiators in the mikvah that warm the water. And the water is clean? The water is cleaned regularly. The water has chlorine in it. And uh, often in a busy mikvah, the water will be changed several times a, uh, several times a week. Are there any nights of the year that the mikvah is closed? Mikvah is open every night of the year, except Tisha B'Av and Yom Kippur for the obvious reasons. You can't bathe, you can't have sexual relations. So that means on a Friday night it's opened and Chag? It is open on Friday night and Chag. Women get ready before Shabbat, they get ready before Chag, but the truth is they can even get ready partially over a three-day Yom Tov and go to the mikvah. So I come in, I see over there there's a box. What do I do? I uh... So essentially you buzz. Let's go inside. So I walk in and you'll be sitting at the desk over here? Yeah, all mikvahs more or less work the same way. Uh, you come in, there's a welcome desk, there's a mikvah attendant, and uh, the mikvah attendant will often ask the woman, did you get ready at home? Do you need to get ready here? Do you want a room with a shower? Do you want a room with a bath? Does the mikvah cost money? Yeah, mikvahs cost money. Um, in America they're, or in Europe, they're privately funded, and so often the cost is a little bit higher. In Israel, they're publicly funded. Nonetheless, there is a cost. Uh, the more accessories you need, the higher the price, but it only goes up incrementally in small numbers. So what should I bring with me to the mikvah? So first of all, you could bring nothing. Meaning if you, you're the type of woman who's going on her way home from work, or you slip out of a family bar mitzvah and you want to just discreetly go to the mikvah, the mikvah really provides everything. Some women really like to bring their own things. So they like to bring their own towel, their own slippers, their own, uh, their own razor and shampoo and so on. It's really very individual. So I see over here there's a waiting room with a couch. Will I meet anyone at the mikvah that I know? So while the, we try very hard to be discreet, uh, the truth is, is that it's a community of women and it's a space in which women interact. What we have here, like you saw, is a waiting room. Uh, there are only, there are four rooms for prep here. And if we end up with six women coming at the same time, then some of the women are gonna to have to wait. We try to make it as comfortable as possible. When a bride comes, sometimes she's accompanied by friends and family, and the waiting space is used by them. Okay, can you show me a room? Sure, I'd love to show you a room. Why don't we take a towel and a, this is really to put on the floor so you don't slip uh, as we go, so you can see what the experience is like. There are so many doors in this hallway. Yes, so uh, this is again not uncommon that there's a corridor with doors facing the corridor. We're gonna go into this first room. This room is just a shower. Some of the rooms have a bath, some of the rooms have a shower. Come on in. Um, the shower serves two purposes for two different kinds of women. There are the women who get ready at home and they just wanna shower off quickly before going into the mikvah, kind of like going before you go into the pool. Uh, there are some women who strongly prefer a shower to a bath, and so a woman might choose this as the place in which she prepares. And if I want to take a bath? So come and see the next room. Come on in. This is really one of our most luxurious rooms. Wow. You can see there's a lot, there's of, a space lot here. of space here. And here's a bathtub that you can really stretch out in. I see there's all these things on the shelves. Do I use that in order to prepare? So as I said earlier, you can bring your own things, you can use the accessories in the mikvah, but the purpose of the accessories is really twofold. Uh, there are the accessories you need to get ready for the mikvah to remove chatzitzot from the body. Uh, things like uh, nail clippers or maybe nail scissors, shampoo, conditioner, and then we have a few things that are really about grooming. In other words, a razor or a tweezer. So I come in, I bathe or I shower once again, and then what do I do? 
Okay, so first of all, a woman who comes ready does not actually have to shower before she goes into the mikvah. Many women don't like that extra step. She really can come and uh, disrobe and call the mikvah attendant if she's done her prep and iyun, which I'm about to explain or model. Uh, what a woman does iyun, it means she checks to make sure she's removed all the impediments, all the chatzitzot. And as you can see, there's a mirror here, and there's a full length mirror over here, and a mirror over here. So really a woman has uh, the ability to check all angles of her body to make sure she's removed the things that need to be removed. How do I let the balani know that I'm finished preparing? So what you do is, and this too, like the welcome desk, is a pretty uniform feature in all mikvahot. There is a button that you push, it lights up by the welcome desk we were just at, and that way the mikvah attendant knows who is ready. And on Friday night, I press the button? No, on Friday night there's a slightly different system. It's called knocking, right? And so women come, and then when a woman is ready, and actually on Friday night it can be a bit of a bottleneck, so many women come at the same time, everyone is ready at the same time because they got ready before Shabbat, and you can actually hear simultaneous knocks uh, throughout the mikvah. The mikvah attendant then goes room by room and calls the women one by one into the mikvah. So I look over my body, I put back on my towel, I press the buzzer, and then? And then the mikvah attendant knocks on your door to let you know the mikvah is free, and you come right this way. Wow, this is stunning. So the Bella Meek greets me over here. What is she then going to do? Um, so there are a few options that a woman should really know about. The traditional model is that the balanit, in fact, is waiting on the other side of the door. The woman comes in and she's going to disrobe over here. The mikveh attendant will back away to give her a little privacy or turn away if it's a smaller space. The woman disrobes, puts her towel here and goes down into the mikveh. Um, another option is for the woman to work out with the mikvah attendant that she wants to come in privately. She wants to come in alone and exit the water alone, and she only wants the mikvah attendant to be there uh, overseeing her immersion, but no other point in her experience. All right, so I'm in the room. I say the bracha when? So it depends what community you come from. If you're from the Sephardi community, then you're actually going to say the bracha outside of the water. You can see there's a Natila Yadayim sink here, right, with the cup. Sephardi women from certain communities will do Natila Yadayim. They'll be wearing a robe and they'll have a towel over their head in order to make the bracha over the tvila. They'll step back uh, away from the mikvah itself before coming forward, taking off their towel and robe, and then going down into the mikvah. And often they do seven immersions. What does an Ashkenazic woman do? An Ashkenazi woman might do anything from one to three tvilot. Some of it will depend on, uh, uh, on her mother's custom. What she will do is put her robe and towel there, go into the water. She will be saying the bracha without clothing on. She might move the water around to create some sort of uh, uh, barrier. She might cross her arms over her, her chest to separate the, the upper and lower part or she might do nothing. All of those are okay. She can make the bracha as she is. And I've heard that sometimes the balanik gives me your hand when I come up from the mikvah. So there are all sorts of interesting uh, practices that are not halachic that have come about. One is that the mikvah attendant puts the towel on top of the woman's head when she makes the bracha. That's for the Ashkenazi women who are in, making the bracha in the mikvah. A woman can ask not to have that, or she can grab the towel and put it over her head if that's her custom. She can also say to the mikvah attendant, I don't really want you to put your hand on me when I come out of the mikvah. So the balanit doesn't have to go in the water with me. <laughs> no, the balanit does not have to go in the water unless a woman is scared of water or unless a woman has a particular handicap and needs help in the water. Then the mikvah attendant can go in wearing a bathing suit, right? And then gently hold the woman. What position do you dunk in? So really, it's a little, you know, it requires a little bit of, not gymnastic ability, athletic ability perhaps. It really is a deep knee bend down, arms loosely out in front of you, but really, there's no rule. Uh, some women like to do a dead man's float under the water. I've seen a woman go all the way backwards and go like a reverse dead man's float in the water, but it works for that woman. Any position that gets the woman under the water is, uh, is acceptable. She really uh, needs to be completely enveloped, not a hair of her head sticking out of the water. And the only thing that mikvah attendant is there to do is to make sure nothing sticks out of the water. When can I have time for personal prayer? 
You can have time for personal prayer after you finish your halachic obligation. That's where women who have the mikveh attendant with them might say, you know what, I'd like a moment alone. Can you, uh, can you go out and, and let me say some prayers privately? Is this the same place where you dip your dishes? So it is not. Most communities or all communities also have a keli mikvah, largely because that's used by men also, by children who go to dip uh, the knives and the pots and pans that people buy. So I come out of the mikvah, I take my towel, I put it back on, and then where do I go? Well, you're gonna go back to your room. We already saw a room with a shower, we saw a room with a bath, and now come see a third room that we have in this mikvah. Wow, this is not a regular room. No, this is There's the a bride room. Yes, this is a beautiful room. It's used by brides and a lot of detail paid to make this an even more spectacular experience than the regular rooms. Is it only for brides? Can I also go in the jacuzzi? <laughs> you can certainly go in the jacuzzi if you schedule an appointment. If there aren't brides using it on that evening, then really any woman can use it. How do you train to become a Balanit? So there's a great course by the Eden Center. I took that course, I'm a graduate of that course, and it really weaves into the, uh, the training both halakhic material, um, psychological material, spiritual material, all religious material, everything you need to be compassionate and aware of some of the complexities and challenges that women face at different times of their lives when performing this mitzvah. All right, so what's the craziest story that you have for the mitzvah? Craziest story I had, and I have quite a few, but one of my favorites is the night that the, uh, the heater went off in the mikvah, and so the water was freezing cold, and uh, many women came to the mikvah, and I kept saying to them, look, you can go to another mikvah. You know, there are other mikvahs in the area. Not one of them did. All of them decided to go into the mikvah, and the shrieks you heard as they got into the cold water was, uh, was funny also quite inspiring because all of them insisted on doing the maximum number of immersions according to their custom, even though I told them they really only had to do one, one or two or three, but uh, they, they went for the whole thing and it shows how inspired women are. It showed me anyway, uh, how connected women are to this practice. Thank you so much, Reverend Nate Nakama Goldman Barish. This has been an excellent tour and really informative. You're very welcome and I hope we'll see you back here.